My fellow Super Earthers, today we've got a whole heap of new medicine discussions to be had. Join me for this week's State of the Hell Divers to you. Recently, a ton of the weapons have been rebalanced, making them a little bit more or a little bit less viable. So let's dive into what has shifted and what weapons are rising to the top. The arc throw has been fixed in a lot of different ways. A lot of the inconsistencies have been taken out with the constant one second charge shot now, as well as a reduction in distance from 50 meters to 35 meters. But the biggest change being the increase in stagger force. I think this makes the arc throw a little bit more viable than before. I still don't use it very often myself, but I know a lot of people who main it, and they seem to love it. So if you like it, I think it's only going to get better from here. Especially after the Arc Throwing War Bond came out recently, you have a lot more armor that makes you a little bit more resistant to Arc damage. So I think it's a lot more viable now. The Liberator Penetrator got a full auto mode. I don't think that this is game breaking in any way, and I don't use it very often myself. But if you use it, it kind of makes it so that if you're in a tough situation, you can get out a little easier. The Dominator got a huge buff here, going from 200 to 300 damage, and it increased the Stagger. Stagger is so important, especially in those big mobs. It helps you get out of a lot of sticky situations. I've tried the Dominator since the patch, and it's way better now. Notably, the Slugger took a massive hit overall. They reduced its overall Stagger, reduced damage from 280 to 250, reduced the Demolition Force. Basically, the Slugger took a huge hit, and I don't think it really necessarily needed that hit. So if you're using the slugger, there's much better options. They also balanced the recoilless rifle to increase the number of rockets you restore from supply boxes from two to three. I think this is pretty crucial, especially since you can take so many rockets with you in your backpack. It makes the recoilless even better than it was before, and it was already pretty good. Same with the spear. You get more missiles back from resupply, going from one to two. Also a great improvement. The spear is already tricky enough with the lock-on mechanics being so janky. So hey, it needs the buff. The heavy machine gun was also nerfed. I think it kind of needed this. A lot of people were taking it in all the time. It's going from 1200 RPM to a little bit lower at 950. I still think it's a pretty good weapon if you like that kind of play style. I personally take in a couple of other things that I think are better, but hey, to each their own, right? The Patriot Exosuit also took a pretty solid nerf. And once again, I don't think that this needed all that much. It was already kind of difficult to be utilizing. I thought it was fine, but not great. Uh, but now rockets will only penetrate armored on direct hit. So that means if you're going against armored enemies, which you generally are, especially at higher level missions, you have to hit them right on and direct. If you miss or if you're trying to get splash damage, don't expect it. I think that this takes the Patriot Exosuit from like an A minus ish range to like B, B minus. It's really not that great anymore. It's tough to justify utilizing, especially when you take up one of your only four slots. One of the biggest changes in the game is that fire damage has been buffed once again. It was already super powerful and had received a 100% damage increase, and now it's got a 50% damage increase per tick from all sources. That means your flamethrower, that means your incendiary weapons, that means your incendiary grenades. They're all doing more damage. Not to mention the fact that the breaker incendiary was recently buffed. Damage per bullet increased from 15 per bullet to 20 per bullet. That's a huge increase, basically another 25% on top of that. If you're not running the Breaker Incendiary, I highly recommend giving it a shot because that thing is awesome right now. And you can make an entire build around fire damage. I've made a build with it and it's really fun. It's not meme at all anymore. It's actually real. Fire damage is buff as heck right now. I would argue that the biggest change in overall gameplay has been the introduction of the Quasar Cannon. Or the Quesadilla Cannon, as we like to call it. Man, this thing is awesome. It does roughly 840 damage per shot, which is the same damage output as the EAT and recoilless rifle. It's got a three second charge time. So if you're in a real jam, it's kind of hard to use. But if you're a little bit further away from the action, pretty straightforward to utilize. That 10 second cooldown that you have to use after each shot, I think it's a fair trade off, especially considering you have infinite ammo. That is so nice to have. You don't have to go around to get the resupplies. If you're just kind of soloing stuff, the Quasar Cannon is awesome. I love it. When you look at the damage output of this thing, it averages between one to three hits for most big enemies if you're focusing on the weak spots. So once again, it's not like the spear where you just lock on and hope for the best. You do have to aim, but aiming this thing is pretty dang easy. When we get into the numbers, the time between shots is longer than the EAT and recoilless, but I think that the infinite ammo makes this weapon super viable. Essentially, it takes 13 seconds at best case scenario to unload two rounds on this thing. 
Compared to the EAT, which is two or three seconds, it's a lot longer. But you have all the ammo you could ever need, and you never have to drop another supply, which is awesome. Next, the automatons. This has been a big point of discussion all across the internet. Operation Swift Disassembly was a success. We made it. And then they clearly reassembled themselves pretty quickly. But hey, we did it either way. Uh, Malevolon Creek. Yeah. I don't know if you guys were there, but I was there. And it felt so good to be in the trenches as we cleared through that thing, man. And for a brief two days, we had absolutely no automaton. Beautiful, beautiful quiet in the galaxy. But they came back. Not a surprise. I also think that no matter what we do, they're probably always going to be coming back. I'm sure that maybe later in the game, like a year or two down the line, maybe we'll get rid of them entirely. But I don't think they have any plans of getting rid of them. It might be a hot take, but I don't think that anything that we do in the game really has that much effect on what the devs are going to do with their overall plan. If you're one of those people that want to play the game because you think I am making a real impact on this galaxy and in this universe, I think that's great. I also just kind of feel like, hey, they're writing a story. They have their plans. We're along for the ride. Democratic detonation is here. This war bond seems pretty sweet overall, and I've unlocked a few things, but I haven't unlocked everything quite yet, especially since it only came out as a recording this a couple days ago. Essentially, this thing is the explosive damage war bond. If you like explosives, get it because you're going to have a ton of them. As far as weapons go, we've got the BR-14 Adjudicator Rifle, the R-36 Eruptor Rifle, also another explosive rifle, but this one is bolt action. The CB-9 Explosive Crossbow, I think this is going to be really cool, especially for stealth missions and other things, although the explosives are a little bit loud, but hey, you can get through without making noise directly on you, which I think is going to be crucial. Next, we've got the G-123 Thermite Grenade. I think it's pretty cool. It's a sticky grenade, so hey, Halo, we're coming for you, baby. The damage output seems pretty moderate, but if you like sticky grenades, this thing's pretty awesome. Probably the thing I'm most excited about in this war bond is the GP31 grenade pistol. Sure, you're only going to get around, but it's in a grenade pistol. Who doesn't want that? Basically, everyone has been running the P19 Redeemer, and I think that it's probably going to stay that way. But if you need explosives, the GP31 seems like it's going to be a great option to take in. Finally, they got the Expert Extraction Pilot Booster. Basically, it just makes it so the extraction shuttle gets there a little faster, you get out of there quicker. It's nice for those missions with longer extractions, but other than that, I don't think it's going to make much of a change. We also get a slew of different armor. I'm a little bit of a Fashion Souls player, you know, or Fashion Helldivers player, and the CE-07 Demolition Specialist is awesome. The other ones, I'm not that crazy about, but that one looks cool as heck, man. To go along with this new war bond, they have updated the explosive damage shown in the UI. So now all of your explosive damage is shown after missions. So if you really want to show everyone that you were doing your part, now you can show them. Finally, there's a lot of conversation about new enemies coming. The Illuminate are definitely going to show up at some point, and we know for a fact that they're probably coming from the north. Probably in the next one to three months, I would expect to see some new enemies coming in just to keep things fresh for players so that we keep coming back and coming back to new content. And now that the level cap has gone from 50 to 150, we've got a lot more playing to do. Overall, there's been a ton of new updates in Helldivers 2, and if you're not trying the new weapons and the new war bonds, then you're not doing your part as a super earther. I'll see you on the battlefield then, boys. Hoorah!